On the show today, two sprint car drivers have struggled this year that I didn't expect, and I have a theory why. Plus, we talk Logan Seavey, Devin Moran, and the Lucas Final Four, and more. Let's go. It's Monday, October 16th. I'm Justin Fiedler. This is Dirt Tracker Daily. I want to start today off uh, with the plight of two sprint car drivers this season and a possible cause for their struggle. Uh, one full-time World of Outlaws driver and one young guy still kind of trying to find his feet a little bit. The Outlaw driver I'm talking about is Sheldon Hoddenshield. Still a handful of Outlaw races left in 2023 between Devil's Bowl and World Finals, but Sheldon and the Stenhouse Jr. Marshall Racing team are on their way to their worst statistical season in five years. Seventh in the standings, just three wins, and their worst top five and top ten percentages and their worst average finish since 2018. For reference and some context, that 2018 season was Sheldon's second on tour ever and his first with the NOS 17. A year ago, I think that team believes if a few things go their way, maybe a few things go differently, they could have been in contention for the Outlaw title. But this year, they have been almost completely out of the national conversation. While we've been focused on the championship battle between Brad Sweet and David Gravel and Carson Macedo, they've struggled behind even Donnie Schatz. The 17 has almost as many finishes of 15th or worse as they do top fives. There had even been rumors recently that Sheldon could be on the hot seat, although that talk seems to have quieted in the past week or so. The other driver I wanted to point out here is Ryan Timms. He burst onto the outlaw scene in 2022 with a ninth in his debut at River Cities and a second at River, uh, Red River Valley the next night. He also led laps during a Gold Cup prelim uh, before finishing second that night as well. Overall in 2022, 44 winged 410 starts, 8 victories, 20 top 10s. But 2023 has seen him take a major step backwards. In 24 outlaw appearances, he's only made 11 features. And his lone top 10 was an eighth on his prelim night at the Knoxville Nationals. Overall, in 57 410 starts, he's got just two wins and 10 top 10 finishes. He's been solid in midget competition, though, with five victories, currently sits fourth in the USAC standings. These two drivers, clearly a lot of talent. Tim's midget stats, too, I think helps show that he hasn't forgotten how to drive here. So obviously, what's different? What changed? What, you know, what are these guys struggling with? I really wonder about how these drivers and teams have adapted in 2023 to the new Hoosier sprint car tires. That seems to be the real main difference we can see kind of from the outside. You know, this is just speculation on my part. I have not spoken to the teams. But I have talked to a few other folks around sprint car racing and kind of just about how much some of these teams were thrown for a loop with the new tire. Some have figured it out, you know, figured it out and have thrived and others have struggled. James McFadden was just on Winged Nation here in recent days talking about their struggles at Roth Motorsports and trying to figure out if it was the engine or the tires or some combination of the two. And it's clear that Lance DeWeese lost his ride with Don Kreitz because they couldn't find a setup to get Lance fast and comfortable since the switch. I don't want to turn this into a Hoosier bashing session, but both of the drivers I've talked about here have had significant fall off. It's certainly not uncommon for stats to fluctuate a bit from year to year. But with what we know about how others have handled this and the drop-off, it really makes you wonder. Both Sheldon and Tim's are plenty talented, have had a lot of success, and what we've seen this year doesn't really make sense until you factor in that big difference. Hopefully they'll uh, be able to find some solutions this offseason with some time to reflect on uh, what happened this season. Uh, we've got four days of the show left this week, and we have four drivers who will be competing for the Lucas Championship come Saturday night at Eldora. So I want to do a spotlight of each of those four drivers every day on the show through Thursday. And we'll start today with number four on the list. That is Devin Moran. Moran is back on a national tour this season after a few years away. He's uh, in a different car as well. He had that run uh, for several seasons with Ty Tuareg, and then now he's joined at Double Down Motorsports for 2023. That was following the departure of Hudson O'Neill to the Rocket House car. With weeks to go in the Lucas season, Moran didn't look like he'd be joining the championship four in the Lucas chase. He trailed both Brandon Overton and Tim McCready in the standings. But a strong last month and a half of the season, along with those strange decisions on the final weekend from Brandon Overton and his Wells team, vaulted Moran into that final spot. From Florence on August 11th through the Pittsburgher, Moran's worst finish was ninth. And through those 16 Lucas main events, his average finish was a very strong 4.94. Over the last 10 features, the only driver with a better average finish than Moran on tour with Lucas was Ricky Thornton Jr. Things were a bit up and down for Moran this season, uh, you know, kind of all the way through the summer. He didn't get a Lucas win until the Show Me 100 at Wheatland in May, and he technically didn't even lead a lap in that race as RTJ crossed the line as the winner but was knocked back to fifth in the final rundown after failing the droop check that gave the win to Moran. 
Moran's only other Lucas win on the year was a prelim night at Deer Creek in July, but he does have three wins elsewhere, two with the Outlaws at Volusia in January and an XR prelim win at Off-Road. Of, four, uh, of the four in this final group, I think Moran has the longest odds to win at Eldora and take the title. Going back through 2021 in the Eldora Crown Jewels, Moran is the only one of those finalists without some sort of Eldora win, either a big win or a prelim night win. He trails all three in top fives and in average finish. He was eighth in the dream back in June and 23rd at the World 100. That team seems to be peaking at the right time, and we've seen Devin get hot before, but I think beating these other guys for the championship is going to be very difficult. I'm a Devin Moran fan. I've interviewed him for this channel, but I just don't think this is their year. Drop me a comment. Let me know what your thoughts are on Moran headed into Eldora in this week's Dirt Track World Championship. Uh, the 2023 USAC Silver Crown season wrapped up yesterday with the finale on the pavement at IRP. After winning the final dirt event of the year during an incredible non-wing sweep at the Eldora Four Crown, Logan Seavey entered the, uh, the last race with a 16-point advantage over Cody Swanson. Things started out in Swanson's favor. He had fast time in qualifying, which gave him the main event pole, and he led the first 23 laps. But things started to go sideways from there. He had an ill-handling race car. He hit the wall at one point, multiple trips to pit road. Swanson did battle back to finish fourth, but with CV down in sixth, it wasn't enough to eclipse him for the title. Already this year, CV had won Chili Bowl, Indiana Midget Week. He swept the USAC uh, uh, divisions at the Four Crown, and now he's got his first ever Silver Crown Championship to add to the list. It's been an incredible season, and I think uh, he's also got the, I don't think this is true, uh, the, he's in well well positioned for the uh, USAC Midget Championship as well. The, they've got just the West Coast swing still to go. He's got a very sizable advantage in that, uh, in that championship. He's not in position for the sprint car title, but he could very easily here win two of these three uh, USAC National Championships here. Uh, of all the accomplishments, I feel like the USAC Midget stuff for CV might be the most impressive. He jumped into the Abacus Racing Ride, which was a car and a team that hadn't had much success on the national level, and he's bagged six wins in 21 races along with 16 top fives, 18 top tens. He's not far off the pace set by Buddy Kofoid in 2022, which was a record-breaking midget season. Seven races remain for the USAC National Midgets. They've got that West Coast swing uh, beginning November 14th at Bakersfield. They'll then go to Placerville for two nights, Merced for two, and close out for two nights at Ventura for Turkey Night. If you want to see CV's USAC stats, all three national divisions are part of the analytics section at dirttracker.com. A bunch of free information is available there. You don't need to log in. You don't need a subscription, anything else. And it's a great resource for those fantasy and pool picks, or if you're a member of the media looking to do some research. You can uh, grab a subscription, though, to Dirt Tracker Plus. It gives you a ton more information and added stat tools like the driver comparison tool and information by a racetrack. A Dirt Tracker Plus is $4.99 a month or $49.99 a year, and you can easily cancel any time. If you buy the year subscription, that basically gets you two months free. Uh, to dive in, click the analytics and plus options in the nav bar over at dirttracker.com, or you can click the links below in the video description. Uh, that's it for today's daily. The streaming schedule is quiet today as the season starts to wind down around the country, but you can see it anyway over at dirttracker.com slash watch tonight. Hope you guys have a great Monday out there. We'll see you right back here tomorrow.